Hello, this is Stephen Hour, and yes, we are back with another top 10 video. Today, we'll be doing top 10 gangsters from comic books. Now, this is another video I'm interested in doing, and we're nearly done with me, you know, gangster obsession with top 10 gangster videos type thing. We're nearly there, and this is close. This will be the proper final one. But there is another one, but they're not really gangsters. We'll get to that video when I do it in the in uh, further down the line. But in the meantime, let's get into the te uh, let's get into the list now. There's some honorable mentions, and I also want to establish the rules for this. There have to be gangsters from comic books, crime laws. They can be eccentric or colorful as they want. But they have to be from comics. I will be straight up. Majority of these people come from Batman and Spider-Man's Rogues Gallery. And maybe others, but it's really from Marvel or DC. And, yeah, so I will be straight up honest. But let's kick off with two honorable mentions. The first one is... The honorable mention goes... The first one goes to Dick Tracy's Gangsters. From the Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy is a famous comic strip character. And is famous for having a rogues gallery of deformed gangsters. And the fact that deformity is revealed in their names. Some of the most infamous included Flat Top, Itchy... Mumbles, Influence, Big Boy, Prune Face, Shoulders, The Brow, Breathless Mahoney, you name it. There's a, and because there's such a big roster, and I do mean a big roster, I feel that, you know, just to, instead of just choosing one to represent all of them, just have a good, I just thought just have them all be a part, like, a part of that whole, like, have the whole group be, that be a part of that one, that the whole group get the whole honorable mention, and so, yeah, and I've, I've always liked Dick Tracy, to be honest, and I, and I thought, let's give him an honorable mention, another honorable mention goes to, well, he's kind of a gangster, and I'll more explain it, Honor the next honorable mention goes to, Two-Face, Again, Two-Face, in many ways, is not a traditional gangster. We all know, Harvey Dent, Gotham City's district attorney, suffered from a split personality, only came worse when a, mob, when a notorious crime boss threw acid in half of his face. As a result of that incident and having his, his two-headed, um, two double-headed silver coin be scarred, and even his face being scarred, his split personality came out. Two-Face is a gangster obsessed, or is a person obsessed with duality 50-50, and bringing his own twisted sense of justice and law and order to the city. Like, again, he's kind, he's not, he can be portrayed as a gangster, but not real, but he's not really a gangster. Sometimes he can be a crime lord, and in many ways, that's how we kind of, I kind of always viewed him as this, as this tough guy, Gangster that's constantly flipping a coin, but deep down there is still that hot deep down Harvey is still in there the nice this nice friend that was You know that always had Batman's back But in many ways he's also he's not really portrayed as much of a gangster really but more just a criminal mastermind So I kind of give him an honorable mention because he really doesn't fit The what the images of an actual of an actual gangster so I give it that as an honorable mention with that out of the way, let's get further in the list. Kicking off at number 10. Maxi Zeus. This is a more unique gangster, as Maxi Zeus is a crime lord who thinks he is the Greek god Zeus. He's usually portrayed, and when he first started out, he was portrayed as a serious threat and made a name for himself in Gotham's underworld. But as the time went on, he's now become more of a loser villain. I personally don't find what's so goofy, but he's a gangster who thinks himself as a Greek god. How is that How is that weird? Like I said, every villain in Batman's Rose Guy can be considered weird and goofy, but if you choose to write him as silly and goofy rather than good characters, I've always liked him. And the reason that number 10, because there's really been not, not that much stories to really further develop, plus he's kind of fallen to the bottom of the barrel. I never found him to be that bad of a character, and I found it to be a very different and interesting comic book gangster. So I give him number 10 because of that. At number 9, the Great White Shark. One of my favorite Batman villains of all time period, just like Maxi Zeus, or oh, Maxi Zeus as being another fan favorite. The Great White Shark, real name Warren White, was a uh, stockbroker until one day he embezzled a lot of his uh, customers. Eventually, he was sent to trial where he bribed the jury and managed to, you know, take an insanity plea. The judge, of course, knew he wasn't, so instead he sent him to Arkham Asylum. 
During his time in Arkham, where he encountered pretty much everyone, including Mr. Freeze, ended up getting physically deformed, and he became the Great White Shark. Uh, Shark, after being turned insane by the other inmates, he runs most of Gotham's rackets from his jail cell. I like how he he's a big player and runs it from his Arkham jail cell, and how he became this uh, one of Gotham's infamous mob figures because of his time at Arkham. I like the also how the, the, the image is so great, and I really wish that he could be brought into live action and be a more interesting and dynamic character. I really wish that. And who knows, maybe Batwoman might adapt him one day. I really hope so, because he's a really fun character. And it would be good to have him finally get, be a character that can finally be stopped being used in the comics and finally be used in live action media. But I highly doubt that's ever going to happen. Coming in at number 8. Silvio Silvermane Manfredi. If you don't know who this guy is, well, Silvio Manfred, oh, Ma Silvermane is essentially the boss of the Manfredi crime family, you know, one of the Magia families. In Marvel, instead of having the Mafia, Marvel calls him the Magia, it's their own thing. Basically, he's this old aging crime lord, but he's obsessed with eternal youth, but he's obsessed with eternal youth, it's, and as a result, he becomes, becomes the cyborg and has battled Spider-Man and many other vil uh, superheroes in Marvel's rogues gallery. I like how he's kind of supposed to be a more comic book version of an old of those old style aging crime lords i really like that he's a, a he's one of my fan favorites he's really fun and i can't and honestly i really feel that he really needs to be used in live action media he's always used in animation shows and probably because that cyborg gimmick really helps he's just all around a a very unique character. I really wish he could be used more in live a uh, in live action. Hell, if they still did those Netflix Marvel shows, which they don't, I feel he could be perfect for one of those. Maybe on um, Jessica Jones. Who knows? That might work. Maybe not. Anyway, he's fun, and I really and I just really wish he could be used. Like a lot of these guys, I wish they could really be you know used in live action. But I like how he's pretty much this old guy who's obsessed with you with youth. That's that makes for interesting stories and really makes him sympath sympathy because he wants to be young again. Again, he's a criminal, but hey. Coming in at number seven, Jigsaw, the Punisher's arch nemesis. Jigsaw, real name Billy Russo, aka Billy the Butte, was a notorious mob hitman. Until one day, after encountering the Punisher, he had his face smashed into a window. Already shown to be a little bit psychotic and pretty much mentally messed up, he basically got his face stitched back together, and and because his face looked like a jigsaw puzzle, he got the nickname Jigsaw. He is obsessed with the Punisher and wants revenge for disfiguring his face. I like how the Punisher doesn't really have that much of a rogues gallery. Most of his guys get killed off. The Punisher, but Jigsaw is a guy that's always stuck around, and basically has always caused problems for the Punisher, and he has an unhealthy obsession with him, which makes him rather interesting. He has, of course, appeared outside of the comics. He appeared in the Punisher War Zone, um, where, with me, I felt that gave us the most accurate depiction of his character. And, of course, they went the more creative decision with Jigsaw in the Netflix Punisher series. Again, I felt that they missed the ball, but it was a creative, a more creative interpretation, which I liked. Number six. The Black Mask, a big name in DC's underground, another Batman villain. R real name Roman Sionis was born into the wealthy Sionis, uh, Ro Sionis family. Uh, at a younger age, he was he had an un unhealthy mask obsession. In fact, he always viewed his uh, people that he was around, they wore a mask. And he was forced to act a certain way because he was part of Gotham's high society, courtesy of his parents wanting to fit in that crowd. Constantly sick of it, he finally snapped. After clearly suffering from some um, clearly mental stability in his life, he you know he killed his parents and eventually ran the family company into the ground unintentionally. And eventually his mind, his mental sna uh, state snapped, and he then created a black mask out of the 
out of the coffin, out of his father's coffin, and became the Black Mask, a notorious gangster in Gotham's underground. He runs the uh, False Face Society, which is essentially a bunch of gangsters who wear different masks. I like how he's obsessed with masks, but also how the character is usually written. He has a more sarcastic and colorful personality. But, and even though the mask obsession, I really wish would have stuck, like the philosophy when you put on the mask and become your true self, which I really wish they could have stuck more with the character, but he also has a bit of a tor uh, torture fetish, and has, unlike his sarcastic personality, he's always fun for every project. He's appeared in a lot of stuff, but of I think a few minor roles in animated cartoons, he's appeared in the Batman Arkham games, though granted in very small roles, but he has made the bridge. From the comics to live action. He appeared as the main villain in Birds of Prey, portrayed by Ian McGregor, who is not comic accurate but still delivers a fun interpretation. And of course, there is, um, he's been recently played in uh, Batwoman with me, I think, giving us the most comic accurate depiction you could ever get of the Black Mask. And I like how the mask gimmick is really used here. It's really great. He's always been a fan favorite of mine, and for many of us comic book fans, he is a fan. He is definitely an infamous B-lister. A B-lister is those that exists uh, in the middle of the circle of Gotham's rogues gallery. He's always fun. Coming in at number five. Ventriloquist and Scarface. Here we're focusing on the original, Arnold Wesker of Ventriloquist, the first one. Arnold Wesker is an old timid man that suffers from a, men of a very unique mental personality disorder, where his more evil persona communicates through a wooden dummy named Scarface that both talks and has the design of an old of those old school 1920s gangsters. Uh, and essentially he runs one of Gotham's infamous criminal undergrounds. I like how he thinks the puppet is real and the puppet is really commanding the organization. He's a very different type of gangster in the fact, well, it's a puppet really running the whole show. He's, it's always a fascinating character, and he sticks out visually. He too, like the Black Mask and the Great White Shark, is another infamous villain in Gotham's Underground in organized crime scenes. He's always fun to see, and I put him at number five. Number four, Tombstone. A big name villain in the Spider-Man rogues gallery, and of course he's gone to clash with other heroes like Daredevil and Punisher and even Luke Cage. Real name, Lonnie Thompson Lincoln. This um, this man um, is an albino, you know, an, I believe an albino, if I'm correct, is an African American that has a unique uh, de de um, deformity in their skin that makes them pure white. Being bullied and outcast, he later became the embodiment of really being fear. And he's essentially has caused troubles for Spider-Man over the years. He's pretty much portrayed usually as a mob enforcer, but also shown to be very intimidating and very uh, intimidating and fearful. He also has a connection to Robbie Robertson, a very a sort of supporting character in the Spider-Man comics. I like the design of the character and just the name Tombstone really sticks out. Hell, in these, uh, I think his very first issue uh, when he first appeared in Spider-Man. That comic image of him just standing over a pile of dead bodies really sticks out for me. And he's just a really fun character. He's of course been portrayed, uh, been, you know, adapted to a few TV shows. Each drastically different. In the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, a hitman. Spectacular, more of a crime, more of a crime lord, businessman type, more in the same vein of the of the Kingpin. And in the uh, Insomniac Spider-Man games, he's portrayed as being a head of a motorbike as being a motorbike gang leader, which I admit, I like that because it is rather different, but still stays true to the character. He is a he is just a fascinating, but also uniquely visual style gangster than any other on this list. Number three, Hammerhead. Probably one of the most infamous gangsters in Marvel Comics. He's an absolute fan favorite. Hammerhead was a pretty much rising player in the Magia American crime scene. He's actually Russian, but he kept it hidden because and tried to come off to him being Italian in order to be made. One day, he suffered a, a um, injury that resulted in him being sh um, badly injured. A doctor came by and helped reconstruct his head by putting antimanium metal in his skull. And as a result of that incident, he lost a lot of his memories. The only thing he could remember was a poster from a 19 from those old school gangster movies like the Chicago's. Because of that, he then dressed and acts like a gangster from that time period. He got the nickname Hammerhead because of his thick head. He eventually rose to be the head of the Hammerhead crime family. 
And of course, just like others, he's appeared outside of the comics. He's appeared in animated TV shows and in the Insomniac Spider-Man games, which gives a modern interpretation, but also combines, I think, a bit of Silvermane's character. I don't know, I was not really a huge fan of that. He's always been a fan favourite of mine. I don't know, because he just screams gangster, like a proper old school mobster. And something we, and that's something we don't get with really other crime lords, as they usually try to blend being a gangster and a comic book villain. But he I like how it's more he is a comic book villain, but he is more but he looks more and acts more like a typical gangster. That I liked. And the fact like in modern times he could definitely stick out as being an old school gangster. I, really, I liked him, and he's a, another B-lister in Spider-Man's Rogues Gallery, and is definitely on Spider-Man's radar. He's a nice villain to see pop up every now and again, and I really wish he could make a live-action appearance. Number two, the Penguin. Probably a criminal for me to put him at number two, as, I, as he is my favourite Batman villain of all time. But I'm looking at this objectively as who's really the best comic book crime lord, and even I have to admit, he is not... He doesn't really be number one. Penguin, real name Oswald Cobblepot, was born into the rich Cobblepot family. But however, being de born disfigured and essentially looking like essentially a bird, he got the nickname Penguin, which he hated. He was also shown to be a absolute criminal mastermind, where he manipulated a lot of events to become the city's biggest um, events to essentially become to inherit his family's fortune. Fortune, and then of course jumped into the organized crime scene where he became Gotham's biggest crime lord. He has influence and stretch to all types of criminal activity. Originally, though, the character was usually portrayed as being a gentleman thief, but in modern times, he is portrayed as being Gotham's biggest crime lord. I've always loved the character. He's a personal favorite um, of mine. He's my number one favorite because of a because of like his physical attributes. Like, he looks like a bird, he's been treated as an outcast because he could never really fit in. And I like how he tries to, be, he tries to compensate by showing, by dressing up and trying to be this gentleman of higher stature, higher society. And that kind, and that really is great character development. But if I'm looking at the biggest crime lord in comic books, I have to think, I believe one does him better. Is a bit, is way better. But it's just better. And that is, number one, the Kingpin. Was there ever any doubt? Often considered comic book's greatest crime lord, real name Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin is pretty much Marvel's top mob figure. And he's had run-ins, originally portrayed as being a Spider-Man villain, though, in re though eventually he moved on to become Daredevil's arch nemesis, and has since fit. Of course, despite that, he still has run into with Spider-Man here and there, and because of him having really two vil uh, superheroes to really, you know, to really, you know, have to avoid, he has to avoid many superheroes. Spider-Man, ov obviously. Daredevil, his arch nemesis. The Punisher, absolutely. I like how he's just this big crime lord, and how he's both, and even though he looks fat, it's actually 100% pure muscle. He's both brain and brawn. And he's arguably comic book's greatest criminal crime lord. And I give him number one. He's of course had has appeared outside of the comics. He's appeared of course in some animated TV shows. Particularly his most famous would be in the 90's Spider-Man cartoon. And of course he appeared in the live action Daredevil movie. Which he was just, which I personally felt, even though the film wasn't good. I personally felt the person playing the Kingpin in that film did a reasonably good job. But it's the portrayal of... The Kingpin in the Daredevil Netflix show, I think will resonate with fans, and I think it's the best interpretation of the character outside of the comics, and really make the character more human and fleshed out. The Kingpin is truly comic book's greatest crime lord. And there we have it, those were my top 10 comic book gangsters. Do you agree who else should have been on the list? Who do you think is number one? Please put your names down, on, please put your opinions down in the comments, and until next time, this has been the Stephen Hour, and ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.